praise the Lord. God is good. Uh, my name is Joylin, and I'm so privileged this morning uh, to share with us the word of God. Before we continue, uh, let's share a word of prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we are so grateful for this day, Lord, that you've granted unto us. Father, we don't take it for granted, Jesus, that you've enabled us to access you this morning. The Lord, you've given us the privilege of uh, calling upon your name, accessing your throne of grace, Lord. We are blessed this day. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your kindness, your love, Jesus, upon us. This morning, Lord, as we hear your word, Father, I pray that you will speak unto our hearts, O God, that, Lord, you will uh, allow us to hear that which you have planned for us, King of glory. We are open to your leading. We are open to your voice, my Father. Speak to us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, this morning, I'm grateful for this opportunity, and we are going to share the word of God about the life of this wonderful woman called Sarah. Yesterday, uh, Anthony, my husband, started on what we'll be, we'll be going through throughout the week about God's promises during turbulent times. We all understand the kind of times that we are going through because of the pandemic, there's so much fear, there's so much anxiety. People are wondering what is going to happen next. People are wondering when will this end. And, and there's confusion everywhere. And it's, uh, it's a season of turbulence. But this morning, we are so encouraged because we still have the word of God to turn to. We still have uh, hope that we can receive from the presence of God. Yesterday he talked, uh, he shared about the life of Isaac. And today we are going to look at Sarah. I know most of the time that uh, Abraham is the one who is talked about, is the, is, is the, is the, is the, the one who is mentioned, is the father of faith, is the, the father of the Israel, uh, Israel community and everything. But today, God wants us to just hear from another character who was also part of this beautiful story that God began. And Sarah, there's not so much information about her, but what we have is enough to encourage us today. What we know is that she was married to Abraham, and she came from the same household, actually, with Abraham. It's only that the... Uh, I think he came. She, uh, Abraham came from a polygamous family, and in that family, uh, he got his wife, Sarah. And when God called Abraham to come out of his uh, ancestral land to the promised land, he came along with his family, and Sarah was that family. Now they were not yet blessed with children. He was childless. Sarah was childless too. And when they came out, they came out just by faith, following a God that, they, that, that told them, just leave your ancestral land and follow me to where I'm going to show you and I'll make you into a great nation. It was quite a big step of faith. But what I'm so impressed today about Sarah is that she was a very obedient uh, wife, to, so to say, and a humble one at that because if today uh, your husband just tells you, let's pack and leave and go to a country you've never known, you've never heard of, I'm sure not, not every wife or not every woman will be excited and just jump into that boat and leave. So just knowing that she did this uh, helps us to understand her in, a, in quite a deep way. Also, she was a beautiful woman. We are told in two instances that Abraham actually had to lie uh, so that because he feared that he would be killed because uh, Sarah was a very beautiful woman and could catch the eye of anyone. But I just want to imagine the life of this woman being married to this man all these years and not having children. Children 
in marriage are a big part of marriage. And I thank God because he has blessed me with children. And I can imagine life without them, that it's, it's a beautiful thing that God has given me children. But I can imagine a woman who, is, who has been married for so many years and not having children, the kind of uh, probably pain and burden and bitterness that she must have been going through. And you know, it's not easy in, in any society to be a barren woman being ridiculed every time you go to fetch water in the river, being ridiculed every time you, you, you are with other women, being talked about behind your back. I can imagine her being beautiful. Maybe some people used to say, oh, with all that beauty, she cannot even bear a child. And I can imagine the kind of life that she used to live. And in our lives, sometimes we also have barrenness that we uh, have in our lives. It might not be uh, barrenness in terms of children, but it could be that you have this business that you have labored on for so many years, but there are no fruits. You have this marriage that you have labored in it for many years, but it, things don't, don't seem to be working. You have your health that you have struggled with for so many years, but like nothing seems to come around. We have these seasons in our lives. We have these issues that trouble us from time to time. And today, I thank God because he is a faithful God. He is a God who keeps his promises. He is a God who keeps his word. And so we meet uh, Sarah when, when Abraham talks to God and, Abra and, and God tells Abraham that, Abraham, don't worry. I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to give you a son. And Abraham is shocked like, at my age, he was 100 years old, and Sarah was 90, and he's wondering, why? what are you talking about, God? We are, we, we are told about it in, in, in Genesis chapter 17. And God talks about his covenant with Abraham, and he mentions in verse 15, and says, God also said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you're no longer to call her Sarai, her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of people will come from her. Abraham fell face down. He laughed and said to himself, Will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarah bear a child at the age of ninety? And Abraham said to God, If only Ishmael might live under your blessing. Then God said, Yes. But your wife Sarah will bear you a son, and you will call him Isaac. And so we meet God just declaring things that seem so impossible to Abraham. But now I can imagine it's one thing for God to talk to Abraham, but it's another thing for Abraham to relay that information to Sarah. So I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure whether really Sarah understood or knew the kind of conversation that was going on between Abraham and, and God. But something else happened in chapter 18, that the three men that come to Abraham's house or tent. And we know the story that these men came and, and Abraham saw them and, and he embraced them and welcomed them to his uh, tent and he made food for them, Sarah made food for them. And after these people had eaten, uh, in verse 9 of chapter 18, it says, Where is your wife Sarah? They asked him. There in, in the tent, he said, that's Abraham. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already very old, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, After I am worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Will I really have a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh, 
but he said yes you did laugh and so we it's it's interesting to see that sarah uh gets to hear this conversation going on between abraham and this man i mean <laughs> women we we might not be at the table all the time but we always want to know what's going on so she gets to hear what is being said and she's she laughs because it it is indeed unbelievable i mean she's very old abraham is very old it's it's practically like impossible to imagine such a thing happening but we are told that the lord said to abraham this this part is it's very profound the lord said to abraham why did sarah laugh is anything too hard for the lord that is a very deep question is anything too hard for the lord and then moving on time passes but god keeps his word because in chapter 21 we get to know that in from verse 1 it says now the lord was gracious to sarah as he had said and the lord did for sarah what he had promised sarah became pregnant and bore a son to abraham in his old age at the very time god had promised him abraham gave the name isaac to the son sarah bore him when his son isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has brought me laughter and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. And she added, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. I'm so encouraged by that. Who would have thought, who would have said that this would happen? How many times have we written off people of, or, or written off situations or circumstances? And then God turns these things around and we just are left asking ourselves, who would have known? Who would have thought? Who would have said? I'm, I'm, I'm taken aback um, growing up when I was 10 years old, my dad passed away. And we are seven kids in, in, in the family. And my mom was jobless, living in the village, in a tiny piece of land. And I remember that when my mom heard that my dad had passed, he was just sick briefly. The first thing that she lamented about was who would take care of my children. And it was a very tough period for her because Practically, how are you going to raise kids, uh, seven kids, take them to school, clothe them, feed them, and especially without the support of the of the of anyone, because even our extended family deserted us. But I remember out of this hard and tough situation, that my mother found God, and I remember, okay, my dad used to be a devout man of God, but it wasn't so much with my mother. She used to go to church, but her relationship with God wasn't that deep. But after my father passed on, she found God for herself. And I remember the countless times that at night I could hear my mother crying to God and reminding God of his word, telling him, God, you have said in your word that you are the father of the fatherless. You have promised that you're going to take care of the widow. I have no one to depend on. It is only you, O oh God. You know that these children need to eat. You know that these children need to go to school. I have nothing on my hands, O oh Lord. And she could cry to God so many times. Of course, it wasn't so uh, easy for me to comprehend then. But looking back, God fought for us. God kept his word that he would take care of the, of the kids who have no father. We went to school, and not just like a day school or anything. We went to good schools. I met, I got an opportunity of going even up to campus. Not because we had so much, but because God kept his word of being faithful. And today when we reflect about God's promises, we want to just ask ourselves, what is it that God has promised you? What is it that you are looking up to God for? Do you know that God is faithful to keep his word? The Bible says that, that even if we became faithless,
God remains to be faithful. I can imagine the relationship of Sarah after the birth of Isaac. I'm sure if God told her that day that, oh Sarah, you're going to this and this and this is going to happen to you, she could never laugh or doubt God's word again because she would have experienced for herself that God is indeed a faithful God who keeps his promises. And so today, friends, I want to encourage you that hold on to the word of God. Keep God at his word. Remind God of his promises. Remind him that he has said this and this unto you. I, I was watching a pastor's, Pastor Elisha's sermon uh, about Ze, um, Zechariah, and he was talking about that Zechariah used to note down the date, the time when God spoke to him. And he was saying that the number of times he has written down God's word upon, uh, that God's revelation or word that he has spoken to him. And it made me, it kept me, reminded me that God has spoken over my life so many times, but I've never really noted it down. Sometimes I actually forget some of it. But today, I want to start anew and say, if God, when you speak a word over my life, I want to hold on to it because I know you are a faithful God. The Bible says in Isaiah that, that when he speaks his word, it doesn't return to him void. It must accomplish that which he has spoken. It says that his promises are yes and amen in Corinthians. When God promises something, he is faithful to keep it. So, even in such turbulent times, God, God's promises are still true. God promised us enlargement this year. Have you started doubting that he would enlarge you? Have you seen yourself and just say, oh no, I don't see anything happen this, happening this year? Friends, I want to encourage you today that let's hold on to God's promises of, uh, of our lives. Let's not give up when situations don't really seem as if they are going our way. Sometimes God can speak a word and it takes a very long time for it to come to fruition. But one thing that we are sure of is that it surely will come to pass because God is faithful to himself. And so as I wind up, I'm just reminded of this hymn that says, Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word. Just to wait upon his promise, just to say the say the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Let's trust God. Let's trust his promises. Whatever he has spoken, let's hold on to his promises. Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful for your word today. Even at such times, King of glory, Thank you for reminding us that you are a faithful God and that, Lord, you will never go back on your word, that you hold your word above your name. So this morning, Jesus, we choose to trust on your promises. We choose to trust on the word you've spoken over us. We choose to trust, King of glory, that you are a faithful God and there's nothing impossible with you. We look up to you. We look unto your strength, O King of glory. We bless your name even during these turbulent times. For we know, Jesus, and this is the time that we will, shall surely experience your victorious hand. We bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.